All right, to start this, uh, open up the spreadsheet, and the first sheet's just an intro. Click on the second tab, and we're going to do area and perimeter. For the perimeter, you simply add up all the sides, and some of the sides aren't labeled, so you kind of have to do some math based on what they get and they do tell you and uh, what's left out. So like this one here, uh, it's 10 meters tall, and you can see the section to the right, there's a 4 meter section. That would mean the other section is 6 meters. So if you add up all those numbers, uh, you'll see that that would be the perimeter. So what you're going to see me do here is just uh, type this out. You don't have to do this part, of course. I'm just kind of proving the math to myself. Well, if you add up all six sides, it comes out to be 30. And so you stick that answer in J6. And you see the box turns to correct. For the area, what you got to do on these is kind of break it into two rectangles because you can solve for the area of a rectangle. So you're going to see me in a moment highlight one section of it and just basically make a second rectangle inside the shape right here. So now you can just solve for those two areas and then just add them together. Well, 3 times 4 is pretty easy. It's 12. And now this where that trick comes in. It's 5 that way, and that is 6. Okay, 10 minus 4 is 6. So 5 times 6 is 30. And so if you add the 12 and you add the 30 together, you get 42, and that's the answer. 42 square meters, or meters squared. Okay, the next one is uh, just telling me uh, you're familiar with your coordinate system in math class, and so you need to come up with the correct coordinates for each one of these dots. And if you go to the left, it's negative, and if you go down, it's negative. So on the x coordinate, if you go left, it's negative. If you go to the right, it's positive. If you go up on the y coordinate, it's positive, and if you go down on the y coordinate, it's negative. Again, you'll see that you'll get feedback indicating if you are right or not. You have to fill in both boxes before the color will change. And this last one's negative one, negative one. All right, this last one we're doing ice cream. So you're going to go to target.com and search for vanilla ice cream. And if you click on these, uh, there's a section called label info. A little down here a bit, scroll down, there it is. And most of them are measured in two-thirds of a cup. If not, you're going to have to do some math, but just stick to two-thirds of a cup and you'll be fine. And start placing those calories down uh, in this chart. So in column A, you put the brand of the ice cream, and in column B, you put its corresponding calories per two-thirds cup. And so uh, you can do other ice creams if you'd like. Uh, I was just comparing a few vanillas. Oh my goodness, that one's 300. No wonder I like it. And research some other ice creams, and then let's make a chart. So you highlight your data, and click on the insert chart icon. And let's do a bar chart. And you do need to label the title, please. And right now it's in just a random order, even though it looks ascending. You can go to data sort range while the data is highlighted. Hit header row, say I want to sort by calories, the largest to smallest, and then you have it in order. You can do uh, as many ice creams as you like. Uh, looking forward to seeing your charts. Go ahead and when you're done, submit this through Google Classroom. You'll have to say uh, add from drive. Thanks.